Okay. Progress. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, there's our announcement for today. Our wonderful uh, climax to a, a month long celebration of Pastor and Lady Kay's anniversary. So we're looking forward to, to that. And I see that Deacon Doogie is going to do his thing today. Uh -huh. okay. Amen. He is Bless always you. a pleasure. Always. He's not on you. So um, do we have um, any praise reports this morning? I can hear. <laughs> no? Okay. Well. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Amen. Yeah, so Amen. that's a praise report in itself. Um, Amen. So to make sure that uh, Deacon Chez is awake, uh, can you open up in prayer this morning? <laughs> she called you out like that. Hey, I didn't know if knew she'd been calling me out forever. Forever. <laughs> oh, my Once goodness. I knew he was cool like that, Let us pray. once Father, I knew once he again, was cool we... like that, it was all right. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity for us to come together to look into your word, opportunity for us to fellowship via this Sunday school lesson. Brain. Father, just as we hear your word today, anoint us and empower us so that we will be doers of your word. Yes. We ask that you anoint our teacher today, that you will speak mm -hmm. through her, and that we will hear what you have to say to us and be obedient to it for your glorification and our edification. Father, we ask you these things and thank you for these things. In your precious son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, we are at September the 26th. Oh my goodness. These last few summer months have truly flown by. And we're gonna say welcome fall because I'm a fall baby. And um but and, and on and on. And God continues to watch over us as these as these days fly by. So Today, um, our lesson is called Believers Praise God. Um, can we go on to our uh, next slide, please? Okay. Um, if someone would read this thing to change. By the end, By of, the this end of this morning, church. Good, good, good morning. morning. <laughs> good morning, G. By the end of this lesson, we will understand the role of Christ and the Holy Spirit in our lives, discern how the Holy Spirit inspires believers to share a life of worship, and plan opportunities for people to begin a relationship with Jesus through our ministries. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Um, we are coming out of, um, I think you need to back up one, Tim. Okay. Uh-oh, are they out of order? No. Okay, there we there are. go. I, there I we did. go. I did. It was one I missed. Oh, okay. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, we're coming out of the book of Acts today. And um, we it is Acts 32, verses 32 and 33, and then 37 through, through 47. Now, we're just going to give a little background on the book of Acts. It was written by Luke uh, in approximately 63 AD. And as we know, he also wrote um, the, the gospel of Luke. Now, Luke was a physician. And a lot of people think that Luke was a disciple, but he really wasn't, at least not in the beginning. He, he was not one of the original 12. But according to Luke 10, Jesus appointed 72, <clears throat> excuse me, 72 new disciples. And it's assumed that uh, Luke was one of them. So um, the book continues the stories of the apostles after the resurrection. In other words, the acts of the apostle, apostles. And a lot, and that's some Bibles titled this the instead of just acts, they say the acts of the apostle. And what it means to us is that we understand the importance and accept mm -hmm. our responsibility paper, yeah. for yeah, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're going to start with verses uh, 32 and 33. And if someone would read that for us, please. Sure. God raised Jesus from the dead. 
and we are mm -hmm. all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the father, as he has promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. Okay. Now, God, it starts off that God raised Jesus from the dead. And the apostles, who, which this is Peter talking here, witness to that they were witnesses to that you know after the fact how they ran to the tomb to see that the tomb was empty they witnessed that he was once in the tomb crucified laid in the tomb but when they went back to the tomb he was gone so they were witnesses to that then it says it goes on to sit at the right he goes on to sit at the right hand of the father which is a honored place okay for us we don't care if we in the ghetto of heaven, we go, we just want to be there, you know? So to sit at the right hand, is just a place of honor. And there was a place uh, in, in the scriptures where two disciples were even uh, arguing with Jesus. It was like, oh, he's going to sit at your right hand. And Jesus was like, don't even be worried about that. Right. Of course, we have, there's other, other work to be done, but that's what they wanted, that, that they wanted that high, high place of honor. And um, it says here that the promise of the Father was to pour out the Holy Spirit upon all of us, upon all of us. Now, I have a question for you. Um, what's the Holy Spirit? The Spirit is God's oh. presence within us. He left his spirit. He said, I will not leave you comfortless and I will send the Holy Spirit so Jesus dwells within us we are his temple and the Holy okay. Spirit is the, he's the third person of the Trinity he's God yeah God and yes. the Spirit yes. Yes. someone say what okay I thought I heard so. okay so the Holy Spirit is an agent of God by which means he used to communicate to us and to influence our actions and there are times when we want to do things and they're not quite right and we say to ourselves something told me not to do that mm -hmm. so yeah. what is that something that told you not to do that yeah. you know when you are connected with the holy spirit when you're co Co connected uh he is connected to you and will advise you and persuade you to do things and see things and um quick story um i got another car it's a long story but i'll make it really quick i saw one car that i wanted went to get it got sitting at the table uh with the guy he's trying to bring up my information on his uh computer this son Something welled up inside of me because truly I had been praying on this decision because in my car was 2004. It was talking to me and screaming and screeching at me. And I'm like, you know, but when I go back, they said something was just on the inside of me. And I looked at the guy. I said, I, I, I can't do this. I don't have a good feeling about buying this car. And he looked at me and he said, go home, meditate on it, pray on it. I said, oh. Like oh, that, right. like that. That's right. So yeah. I go mm, home that night God. and I pray and I go back to another car dealer where I had seen another car. And that was the one that I bought. It was newer. I mean, it was brand new. First time in my life mm. I've ever had a brand new car. Yeah. But uh, the Holy Spirit, and you can't convince me that was anything less, told me that is not the car that I have for you. Yeah. That's not the one that I want you to have. And I know people think things and they like, oh, the Lord told me or the Holy Spirit told me. And, and they may use that as an excuse to make a bad decision. But I really, in my heart, felt like the Holy Spirit told me, you know, go get this car over here because that was not for you. Because I really did feel it like in, in my core that it wasn't right to buy the other car. But that's the Holy Spirit. And even like raising our children or 
making just decisions every day through life. We have to be thankful for you. This was the promise that God made. He's going to pour this Holy Spirit out on us so we can be guided. And that is why it's so important that we do always work on our relationship with the Lord, with Jesus, and with the Holy Spirit. Does anybody have a point on that? <laughs> Usually yeah. I know it's the Holy Spirit because I start arguing. Like, what? Why do I want to do that? And that's my first clue. Hmm. You're also, the debate within yourself. I up, was like, what? <laughs> also, Sister, Sister Ragland, I would just like to point out that uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is, is also the same as the Holy Ghost. I, I'm, oh, reading yeah. from the, I'm reading from the King James Version, you know, and, 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 and the Holy Ghost is synonymous also with the, with the Holy Spirit. In the 10th chapter uh, of Acts, Peter also made reference to the fact that, that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit was poured out on, on the Gentiles as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So Peter is teaching here what it what they need to do to be saved that he had to be raised from uh, that you have to believe in that and we get that from uh romans 10 and 9. what does that say does anybody i know some remember that but romans 10 and 9 says if you declare with your mouth jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved so peter has kind of emphasized this you've got to believe that and that's what we, that's part of Romans Road, is it not? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Can we go on to the next uh, verse, please? Does anybody have, you know, Kim kind of said um, that she argues with herself. Does anybody else have a, a story or a testimony of how the, the Holy Spirit has guided you in something that you've done or guided you not to do something that you wanted to do? Well, you know, I do. Actually, um, both my diagnoses of breast cancer, I had a mammogram three to four months before that was good. And then at that point, the Holy Spirit was telling me, go back. And I'm thinking, well, I just had a mammogram. Yeah, this it, it can be that I need to go back. But I was getting I got the urge both times. The mammogram wasn't even four months old. And both times I went back as I was being urged to do. And I had breast cancer again, both times. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't coming for me because I certainly wasn't looking, you know, because I'm thinking- You didn't want it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I was having a mammogram every six months, mm -hmm. at, 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 you know, with the second one. So I'm thinking, you know, it's okay, but I was getting urged and I know it wasn't coming for me because I wasn't focused on that. Mm -hmm. I said, it had to be God Thanks. telling me to go. Thank you for that, CC. thank yeah. you. And he does work mm -hmm. like that. Yes. And he tells you, oh, you need to be concerned. Go on and check on that. Or he'll tell you, mm -hmm. don't even worry about it. I got it. Mm -hmm. So again, mm -hmm. the importance of, um, of your this relationship. Is. Okay. Um, this is kind of lengthy here. So if you want to split it or if somebody just wants to, and it's kind of tiny too. So y'all can already see the top of my head because I can't see it. So I got to come uh -huh. up close. Uh, mm -hmm. But um if someone would read that, please. It says, Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what, what should we do? Uh, Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children and to those far away all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miracles, miraculous signs and wonders. Okay, so here Peter is preaching, and then the people believed, and they were converted. And after listening to Peter preach, 
They wanted to share in what he had. They wanted to know what all he was talking about. And we as Christians, um, maybe we're not preachers, but we're all supposed to be evangelists, but we're not preachers. But when we live a life where you have worries and concerns and uh, setbacks and things just go wrong in your life, but you just keep on pushing and you keep on striving and you don't give up, people watch you and they want to want to know, how can you be so upbeat like that? Why aren't you just in the bed with the covers pulled up over your head? Why is it that you can just be so happy in spite of all the terrible things that are going on in your life? That is your connection with the Holy Spirit that you know it's going to be okay. And ultimately, our prize, our reward is in heaven. So if we never have a dime, if we never have a car, if we never have a home down here, and if everything just seems, and you know, I say this myself, sometimes I think that I am just born under a gray cloud because just one thing after another, if it's something as simple as dropping something, because I'm always dropping something, oh, just little tiny things. And I call it sissy stuff because it's just stuff that seems like it's just going to happen to me. Nobody else is going to have to be bothered with this but me. But still, I can't, my ultimate goal, gray cloud or not, this silver lining behind it is eternal life. So if we don't have anything on this earth, we have the knowledge that if we just keep pressing and if we just keep believing, we keep testifying, because you can find a blessing out of the darkest point in your life. Do you not agree with that? Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, amen. And, and to that, Sissy, like you were saying, um, you know, even going through this pandemic and everything that has happened, you know, it can get you down. You just, you know, you can't be with family and friends the way you want or you used to. And, you know, it can get depressing. You just sometimes feel like you're all by yourself, you know, but like you say, remember God is there for us. No matter what we go through, we can go back and believe when we know we have a relationship, we know that he said he will always be with us. So even when I'm feeling a little down or, you know, discouraged, you know, I know God said, I'll, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And then my favorite scripture, Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ, which gives me Amen. strength. You know, so that Amen. just gives me that um, confident and courage to continue on knowing that this is not going to last always. Absolutely. Yeah. So the people, thank you, Debbie. So the people are wanting this and Peter mm -hmm. tells them how to get it. What does he yeah. say to them? Uh-oh, we got to roll. It's yeah. 21 after. Um, <laughs> what does Peter say to them how to get this, this gift of the Holy Spirit verse 38 somebody yeah. read that yeah it says each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit once wow. you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you get a measure of the Holy Spirit. And when I say a measure, it's, it's like you get a little bit because you do, and I, and I always say this, but it's the truth. You have to work on your relationship. If you don't work on it, then you really don't know the power of the Holy Spirit. So you go and say, okay, I accepted Jesus and I'm baptized and I got the Holy Spirit and you walk away and you never read the scripture. You never go to church. You never hear a preacher preach. You're not working on it. You're not working on it. And the more you dig into the word of the Lord, the more you fellowship, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, with mm -hmm. people like-minded, that Holy Spirit, Amen. you can hear it and you understand. People say, how do you know that the Lord is talking to you? Holy Spirit, come on. I think when, we, when we're saved, we get all the measure of the Holy Spirit that we're going to get. I think the issue is not how much of the Holy Spirit do we have, but how much of us does he have? How much are we walking in, su in submission to him? Okay, well, that's, that's true. Good. But I'm like saying, you got to go away, dog. Go away. Um, 
Um, what? Okay, I lost my train of thought. Excuse me, my dog wants to go out back. Eddie. <laughs> 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 uh, okay. Yeah. So I mean, you know, maybe to say a measure of it is not the right wording, CC. Um, but uh, that's just the way I feel about it because I guess I got it, but I don't know how to use it. Yeah, yeah. we have him. I, you know, and I think Sometimes. we have we he he indwells us. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us, it, it doesn't say that God gives us a little bit of himself here or there, but he indwells us fully. But it's how much are we then yielded to him? You know, it's not that we grow yeah. because we yield to him. We don't grow because he gives us more and more of himself. We as grow because we grow. We That's what exactly. the point I'm making. We grow. As you yes. grow, as you exactly. study, as you learn, mm -hmm. as you grow, exactly. then it becomes, exactly. wells up inside of you and you get more and more. But that's, I mm -hmm. mean, we can discuss this. We ain't got the time. So we're yeah. going to yeah. So, um, I think I just, Thank you, CC. I just like to, I just like to make a point that the first, if you look and see what Peter said, they said, what shall we do? So when we receive the Holy Spirit, it tells us right there what we should, mm -hmm. that's our response yes. to it. Mm -hmm. yes, it's a community, it's community mm -hmm. forms. So as a church, what shall we do once we're saved? And, right. and all of the, all the answers are right there and all of that. <laughs> yes, so right there. And they, they received mm -hmm. the right promise there. because you re they received the promise when the people before them hadn't even received the promise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're the first mm -hmm. people who got it. And when they got it, look what they, Peter told them to do. And that's what we should do today. Exactly. Same exactly. mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's about so, the walk. turning the walk. In, in 41, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. uh, Peter says that, you know, he baptized and to the church, 3,000 people were added in all. And then our focal verse, verse, verse 42 said, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching, fellowshipping, sharing meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. So this community is 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 forming and it's getting greater and greater. Um, after Pete, after Peter preached, mm -hmm. do you remember a sermon? You know, some people had a sermon that touched them that, that drew them to to um, join in church or turning their lives over. But do you remember a sermon that especially uh, moved you? And I mean, there have been many. We 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 listened to uh, the ministers and the preachers preach and the pastors preach and. We jokingly say, well, pastor was all on my toes today or pastor slapped me all up in my face today. But it's that is what a sermon is supposed to do. It's supposed to convict us. It's supposed to make us think we are. And from that, we recognize the glory of God, you know, um, and what he can do for us. So Peter is really, really pre preaching here. And like it says here, 3000 were were born, were uh, added to the church and the community is forming it's forming and it says here um what they all started to do they started to commune together and and eat together and go to each other i mean remember the early church just like in um uh, black history um they were going to people's houses to preach and to teach and to pray and all of that and this is what this community is doing here. But all this communing and stuff in today's time, especially now with COVID, it is hard for us to do that, to be together like that. That's why I was glad when they said unto me, let's go back into Zion Hope. Yeah. I was glad. Amen. Because <laughs> I miss that community. Yeah. And, you know, I got into a big discussion with somebody and they say, well, the work of the church is outside the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. That is the evangelism part of it. But here it is saying we are supposed to commune together. We are supposed to come together. When the children of Israel were, walk, were, were going through the wilderness, they stopped. What do they do? They build a temple. Yeah. They always had to have a place to worship. Mm -hmm. David, one of his greatest accomplishments, was building, was to build, to to go in and carry the um, the Ark of the Covenant. We talked about that. And then Solomon yeah. comes and they just, we have to have a place to worship because yeah, God man. wants us to come together, yeah. to be yeah. together to yes. worship. And yes, we mm -hmm. can do it over Zoom, blah, blah, blah. 
Mm-hmm. Y'all know how I feel. <laughs> Zoom to me. Zoom to me is like it's like Hollywood Squares. But I mean it's all I mean we can I'm trying to see, see if I can figure out how to turn it down. But, you know, we got back to church. People was going around, can I hug you or we fist bump and what are we doing here? Let's do something. I'm so glad to see you. Yeah. You know, but here it says commune. It says the community is forming. Yes. There were like 170 people, the believers, but then then Peter comes along and adds 3,000 to the church and tells them, this is what you do. We are supposed to be together. Amen. And the people were amazed at his preaching. And Peter went on to, and I mean, and the disciples went on listening for miracles. All together. And Jesus gave them the power. I got to hear the clock. If you recall, he told this. Can you this take it in the other room? I'm sorry. The clock. Oh. In your medicine. Uh-oh. There we go. Okay. Um, ooh, all right. A deep sense of awe came over them, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. Yes, they did. Because in Matthew 10 and 7, it says, <clears throat> as you go, where is it? Uh oh. Okay, as you go, proclaim this message. This is Jesus talking to the disciples. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those that have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely you give. So Jesus empowered the disciples back in Matthew with the ability to perform these miracles. And as with Jesus, when you see a miracle, you're like, oh, what's going on there? You see something miraculous and you're drawn. Mm -hmm. And so therefore the the disciples were empowered to do the same. Okay, can we have the next site, please? Yes, sir, you got 15 minutes to do it. Okay, can somebody read that please? We're at 47, 44 through 47. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Okay, so here, I, I said it was 170 actors, 120 believers, and then 3,000 were added, and everybody brought everything they had to share with everybody, and, and you know, we have our tithes and offering we take into the church where we are supposed to take that money, or, or at that time, the grain or the crops or whatever, into the church, and then it's shared among everyone, and we are to do that today but how do we get away from that all this everybody just bringing everything into the church and sharing it how did we get away from that i don't know it's, it's hard especially when people are begging these days and times we don't know do you re- are you really homeless or are you just really trying to get a hit what is it that you want with this money it's well, it's, it's kind of hard Yes, uh, Vanessa. Yeah, uh, we we it, one thing I love about Zion Hope, especially with the our food pantries, I, uh, when we were doing that, we were praying, we were sharing, we had the resource table, uh, we were people were getting baptized. It was a we were having a Holy Ghost good time. Amen. Singing. Mm. That's the closest you can get it. We were sharing of our. Mm-hmm possessions, giving the word of God, praying for folk, people getting jobs. It was wonderful. So yeah, mm-hmm. we, we, we have done that. Yes, we mm-hmm. have. And churches have their um, food giveaways and some churches that are bigger, they may have um, facilities for the homeless. We try. Yeah, We try. Oh, yeah. We do the best that we can. Oh yeah. But then sometimes you just 
we always try to, we give people the side eye sometimes, but you know, my mother used to say, you do what God put on your heart to do. You give them money. It's not up to you to say or judge what they're going to do with the money. They come to our church. They get a box full of food. It is not up to us to say, I saw them in Kroger's and they spent X amount of dollars. We don't judge. We just give freely and the rest falls on those who receive it. <clears throat> you know, so and, and in the past other verses, verses it said that something that, that came to me when I was was uh, reading this. Um, it said Peter preached a long time, it said he preached a long time. And I kind of kind of chuckled because it came to my came to me. OK, I'm going to make this last point, then I'm done. But it, he prayed and he preached a long time. And I'm thinking, Peter has a zeal now because Jesus changed his name. And Jesus told him, you are going to be the rock upon which I'm going to build my church. Peter just had an assignment. So he was going to preach till he couldn't talk no more. But he just had to get that gospel out. He had to get it out because he knew that Jesus had put this. He says, I'm going to build my church on you. And here he's building his church. So preach on, Peter. Preach on. And 3,000 came. So what are you liking about this newly formed church? This 3,120 people that have been added. What do you think of this new church? Uh, what do you like about it that you would like to see in today's churches? You know, you, you had posed a question earlier. I was thinking that in days gone by, even from um, not just from the times that we're look, reading about now, but even from the time that I was a kid, we lived in close proximity to neighbors and family. And everything that we did was in that within that community. We didn't have to travel like we do now. Mm -hmm. We weren't traveling you know, jumping in cars. We were walking to get yeah. to church. We were walking to go visit with family. We were, and when you're when you're when you're that close to people, then you can have a, a, a society where you're sharing and you're together every day. Because they're saying they worship to together me. every day. Mm -hmm. You know that, which means they were close because they didn't have cars in. And then as our as our um, world has grown, I think that's part of the the reason we don't have the kind of closeness that they had then. I yes. mean. Uh, I mean, even within my own family, we're everywhere, even with, and even though a lot of us is right here in the state of Indiana, you might have to drive 45 minutes to get to where they live, you know. And, and Kim just said that, look how far mm -hmm. she is. You know? Yeah, so it's You're like, right, uh, that's a good point, CC. That's so when, good point. when if, if you can, if you can get that sense of community where you live, which is hard to do now, really hard to do now, you know, that's, that's part of what we don't have on. Uh, and this to, to me talks about small groups, the importance of small groups within the church community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, small groups. Yeah, and that. we do have a tendency to, you know, we tend to sign hope members because they're in our community. But then mm -hmm. we have our outreaches. You know, praise mm -hmm. God for the missionary that go that go out. Mm -hmm. Not only just uh, feed the people that come in, but they go out, and it's it's important. And this church community shared everything mm -hmm. it shared everything there was uh i witnessed somebody saying i need to go see my son and this was right in zion hope i need to go see my son but i don't have the money to travel right now mm -hmm. and the sister standing next to me went in her wallet balled up some money in her hand and put it in the hands of this other woman just to help her. Mm -hmm. And the other woman just cried. She didn't look at it. She didn't count it. She didn't, but why should she need to do that? This woman is like, oh my God, she needs to go see her son. And I'm in a position to help her and just gave her, I think I'm thinking she gave her all the money out of her wallet that she had to help her go see her son. That's community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. his community. Somebody is sick and and uh, the sisters pack up and let's take them some food or let's let's do this or calling out, reaching out. Mm -hmm. It's not dead. This church that was built by Peter, 
it's not dead, but like Cece said, it's just just a little bit more difficult mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we're so spread out. So what's that old song, Bright in the Corner Where You Are? Mm-hmm. You can't yeah. reach out, light it up where you're at, right. and yeah. be a part of the church community. Does anybody have anything else to say on these verses? Uh, yes, I do. On uh, verse uh, 46, where they said they worship together at the temple each day and then met in the homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals. And I remember growing up, uh, we lived in a, um, a big house. It had five families in it. And so everybody just came together. And we also had church in that house. You know, and everybody mm-hmm. just came together. No family lacked because everyone shared what they had. So it was just like a big family and we had meals together and things like that. So yes, you know, mm-hmm. like now mm-hmm. we're so spread out, but still I'm so glad that we do come together and fellowship as a family, as a church family. Mm-hmm. And it really should mean a lot to us because here it's telling us this is what Peter taught. And this is what the Lord would have us to do. And we go through the New Testament and Jesus just talked about love, 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 take Mm -hmm. care of each other, pray for each other, you know, lift somebody up. Don't be so judgmental. Talk, telling us all these things where we can be a community full of love and sharing. And that's something that we can, we work at and we can maybe work a little harder. Mm -hmm. Um, the pandemic has been so very hard and y'all know we tired of talking about it but it is what it is and it's made us diff- difficult but within our community how many people have you called you know how many draft i mean we've been mm-hmm. through drive bys we've done drive bys mm-hmm. just to try to make somebody feel better but mm-hmm. there are things that we can do though however difficult and above all all we just continue to pray for each other because sometimes you find yourself saying, all I can do is pray. That's plenty. That's plenty. Pray, pray. And then as you pray and you're able to put something into action to help that person, then do that as well. Because we can pray, 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 pray. And I always, I know that scripture's in there, but I can never, I keep saying I'm going to remember it and write it down. But it says, yeah, it's good to pray for people, but you need to do something to help as well. (laughs) Anybody know where that is? I'm going to find it. But anyway, and I found it once before I didn't write down. But but yes, it's good to pray. While we are distanced for whatever reason, let us continue to pray and um, give God the glory for all that he's doing, even in these harsh times. Because like we said, even our darkest hours, we can find something to praise God for. Amen. So, Amen. Anybody else? Yeah, I just want to touch on, on, on verse 40, 47. It, said, it says, all the while, praising God and enjoying the goodwill of the people. Mm-hmm. What, what else can we offer then than our sincere praise for all that mm-hmm. the Lord has, has mm-hmm. done for yes, us? Yes. The choir mm-hmm. sings this song, I, I just can't stop. Praising, praising, his praising his holy name. Yeah. Oh, bless the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. So, okay. If we have nothing else, no one else has any point. Hey, I'm smoking. Nine forty-two. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, do we have any prayer requests for whoever will pray? I want to offer up uh, my cousin. Um, again, with the pandemic, she has COVID. She's not in the hospital, but she's really suffering with it. And I sit and took uh, and took an inventory of people that I know that have been affected, and the list just keeps growing. So, if you would pray for my cousin because she's she's sick, she lives by herself, and we calling and texting and do you need us, and we come back well. We just do what we can for her, but please pray for her and everybody else has been affected because we all have, we all know somebody that's had it. Yeah. We Amen. all do. Anyone else have a prayer request? Just asking you, I'll keep my mom in prayer as well. You know, with her help. 
Okay. Sister Vanessa, Minister Vanessa. <laughs> Sister Bartlett, Minister Bartlett. <laughs> Will you pray us out, please? She's muted. Oh. Gracious, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful lesson, Father. We thank you for community. We thank you for fellowship in this Bible study as we go through your word. Thank you for sisters. The facilitator, Father, does yes. just a wonderful job. Father, yes. continue to anoint her from on high. Oh, Father, bless each one of our homes prospectively, Father. Oh, Father, this thank you. Let us continue to, to praise your name and praise mm -hmm. you. And thank you for the promise of your Holy Spirit yes. that rests rule in a bad, bad in our hearts, Father. Go before us today, Father, and dwell within us as we go to service, Father. In the name of Jesus, thank you for our pastor, Father, our under yes, Father. shepherd of mm -hmm. Zion Hope yes. Church, Father. Yes. And we just thank you for all that he's done in his 12 years. We give you all the honor, the glory. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Good Thank lesson. You. Yes. Amen. See y'all at a few. All right. All right. All right. 44. All right. <laughs>